Now, um, which of those beta hydrogens do you th does it seem like the base would most like to take? Based on substitution, uh, the top. We know that we uh, Zaitsev tells us we prefer to form the more substituted alkene unless we have a really bulky base. Yes. Well, this is not bulky enough, so we uh, we prefer to attack this one. Okay. However, the next consideration is we can only attack this hydrogen if it can get itself anti-periplanar to the leaving group. Uh, was it anti-periplanar yet? No. no. You can clearly see that because anti means pointing in opposite directions, but they're both pointing down. All right, and then you should ask, is there any kind of chair flip we could do to make them both anti? Uh, well, you, you could solve this by actually drawing the chair, but I don't know if that's really necessary here to even draw the chair. Um, clearly, there's no way these could ever be pointing opposite to each other because they're always going to be pointing to the same side of the ring. Clearly, these are all both always going to be pointing down, for example. They're both going to be pointing down. There's no way they can be anti to each other. Okay, the only way they could be anti is if one of them was up and one of them was down, basically. All right, so even though we would like to attack here to form the more substituted product, this is ruled out because there's no way to get this anti. So what will happen? Well, we're going to have to take this hydrogen. So let's go ahead and draw the mechanism and the product for that. To be more precise, there's really two hydrogens here. Which one is the base going to take? Well, remember, it can only take a hydrogen that's oh, anti to the chlorine. The, the, uh, uh, the one that's coming out at us. Yeah, this is pointing up and this is pointing down. So these can be anti to each other. There's no way, again, that was the reason we didn't attack this hydrogen, right? Because it was uh, not pointing anti. All right, so let's show the mechanism for that and the products. One thing that you did was good is that you did not change the stereochemistry of this carbon uh, because there's no arrows around here. If there's no arrows, there's no change. So this started on a wedge and has to stay on a wedge, and here's where our double bond is going to be. All right, so this is a good example of what you probably will see on the test, um, applying E2 to a ring. So the point is, rings have less flexibility, so um, they can't always rotate to be non-anti, uh, to be anti. So for one thing, um, if two things start out pointing to the same side of the ring, there's no way they could ever be anti to each other. So there's no way that we can do an E2 with this hydrogen, but we can do one with this. All right, and let's look at the other question that was in the book on that issue. Where did I put it? Oh, somewhere in there. Near the Thanks. Well, why don't you try analyzing this one?
data card and one's uh, tertiary and one is uh, second degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it's going to go to one is more substituated. Good. Some of this product, though? I think that would be, uh, it would occur, but it would be minor. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how minor. The problem here just says draw the formula for the alkene and then S in parenthesis. So I'm not sure how much of that minor product you would get. Usually for these types of problems, they, they just want you to draw the um, either the Hoffman or the Zeitz. What number is that? Uh, number 937. Why don't you draw the answer first and then uh, we'll check that. Oh, you already got it? Uh, okay, good. I'm uh, pretty sure they only want one here, but check that. Which one did that? Which one? We just did part D, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Whoops. Well, there's one we can go in for here. So no reaction. Is it, uh, is it this one? So it must have been. Hmm. Oh, wait, here we go. We have. Oh, they actually yeah. did drop both. They, they do. All right, so I guess uh, they said this one was the major, which I think is the one we said was the major. Okay. <clears throat> but we identified that there could be two anyways. Right. Okay, so that's a good analysis there. So it's good that you labeled that this were the beta carbons, and you said this was more substituted. This was tertiary. This has some hydrogens, too. Um, now, we would, we would most prefer to attack this one, like you said, because it's more substituted, and we don't have too much steric hindrance there, but only if it can get anti-periplanar. Um, but it can because it's pointing uh, in and this is pointing out. So in a sense, these are already anti. So you simply drew the mechanism. Now, there's one problem with the way you drew your product. Um, what is the geometry at this carbon going to be? What's the name of that geometry? Linear, trigonal planar, or tetrahedral? Because it's a, 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 an alkene, a double bond. Double bonds are pretty much always trigonal planar. But that means it doesn't really make sense to use wedges and dashes anymore. That's for tetrahedral. Okay. If we've drawn these two bonds in the plane of the page, drop it. All right, so I think originally you drew the methyl group here on a wedge. However, Actually, I think, I, I think you, would, uh, you should lose credit for that. That's not really accurate. You need to draw these all in the same plane to show the new geometry okay. over here. So this would be the correct way to draw this uh, now, now that this is now a trigonal planar. So they said this is the major product. Uh, but in the answer key, they said that there also would be some attacks down here. Um, so they also drew this as the minor product. So uh, it turns out that, yeah, the Zeit set is the major product, but there still is some Hoffman elimination here, too. Um, so they do this as the minor. Now, in this case, we keep the wedge. In this case, we keep the wedge because now this carbon is still tetrahedral. But when it turns trigonal planar, you've got to get rid of that. All right. OK, so that's a, a good example there. OK, well, that took some time to get through. But like I said, there's a really good chance you'll see uh, some questions about that on the test. That's a popular subject. Um, and even though we spent some time on that, we still didn't talk about one key issue for anti-periplanar, um, which is the anti-periplanar transition state is also used to determine the stereochemistry. That is, it determines whether the product will be cis or trans. We haven't really talked about that, but it would determine whether the product is cis or trans. Uh, but fortunately, that's something that I've got, uh, I went over in another tutoring session with some other students. So if you're watching through the videos, uh, you'll get to that. On the E2 series? Yeah. In fact, if you just look at my webpage, you know, they, they list all the contents. So one of them says E2 stereochemistry, cis versus trans. All right. And then we talked for maybe about an hour about how to determine the stereochemistry, which is also uh, a popular topic on exams. There's a good chance that would come up. So I would try to make the time to watch that.